The 401 error occurs when your request has not been applied because it lacks valid authentication credentials for the target resource. Basically, this just means you can try accessing the resource, aka your website, using the correct credentials. All of that just means it's often a temporary problem. However, if you can't get this error to go away, check out these five different solutions. Number one, flush your domain name system records. Flushing your DNS involves deleting temporary data from your computer. That way, the next time you try to access that problematic URL, it'll make a completely new request and re-authenticate. The process for flushing your DNS varies from one operating system to another. If you're a Windows user, it's as simple as opening the command prompt and typing the command ipconfig slash flush DNS. Windows will return a success message and you can try accessing your website again. Mac users will need to follow a similar process, but the command you need to enter in terminal varies depending on which OS X you're running. Users of the three most recent iterations can use sudo killall dash hup mdns responder. Both of these commands will be in the video description. Number two, clear your firewall and browser caches. Browsers can store data so that they don't have to load websites from scratch every time you access them. This process is known as caching. In some cases, you might be inadvertently storing incorrect login information. If that's the root of your 401 error, fixing it is really simple. Most modern browsers enable you to clear your cache in a matter of minutes. In Firefox, it's super simple. We simply head on over to Options, and from here, click on Privacy and Security, scroll down and click Clear Data. Now we only need cached web content to be active. And once we click clear, that will now be gone. At this point, we could try accessing our website once more, but if the problem persists, the error may be due to your firewall's cache. That is if you're actually using one. In some cases, your firewall may not be communicating with your server, leading to authentication errors. The process for fixing this will depend on the tool you're using. For instance, if you're a Cloudflare user, you can access your dashboard navigate to caching, and inside you'll find an option to purge everything, which includes your entire firewall cache. Purging your firewall's cache won't affect its functionality. Worst case scenario, you might run into longer loading times on your next visit to your site, but that should fix itself after your cache is rebuilt. If you're using a different firewall tool, you'll want to look through the documentation and check if it enables you to clear your cache manually. For some services, it might be necessary for you to contact support instead. Number three. Test for conflicts between your WordPress plugins and theme. Compatibility issues can sometimes trigger a 401 error. Deactivating either element in order to determine the source of the conflict is simple if you have access to the dashboard. Simply click on plugins on the left side, and from here we could just click the deactivate link. That's pretty easy for a plugin, but now for a theme, go to appearance, themes, and simply change from your active theme to something like 2019, and you're all good. Now visit your website, make sure everything's working, and if it is, simply reactivate each plugin one by one and wait for the issue to reoccur. Between your plugins and your theme, you should be able to narrow down the problematic element. However, a 401 error may prevent you from accessing your dashboard, in which case that was not useful at all. But don't worry, we will be able to disable your plugins and theme using an FTP client of your choice. Once you've connected to your server, make sure you're in your root WordPress folder and from there, we're gonna to go to wp-content and then go to plugins. Inside of here are all of the plugins I currently have on my website. And if we would like to deactivate one of them, all we would have to do is simply change the name. What I'm gonna do is add a underscore and then just write disabled. Just like that, the classic editor plugin is now disabled. Just like before, rinse and repeat. Simply disable all your plugins and find which one is causing the issue. As far as disabling your theme, it's basically the same thing. Back here in WP-Content, we're gonna click on the Themes folder. Now just find your theme, and just like the plugins, we're gonna change the name to underscore disabled, and now it will go back to a default theme and allow us to find out if our theme was causing the issue. Number four, disable password protection for your WordPress directories. Tweaking your WordPress.htaccess file can enable you to implement several handy features. One of them is password protecting your WordPress directories, which adds an extra layer of security beyond your login page. The problem is password protection at this level doesn't include a recovery process for your credentials. If you forget them, 
you're locked out unless you disable the feature entirely. Disabling the credentials prompt is easy via FTP. You can either eliminate the password protection feature entirely or turn it off for the directory you want to access. For the first method, you need to locate the .htaccess file within your WordPress root directory. Go ahead and edit this file in your preferred program. Then you can see here at the bottom is a snippet of code that basically says password protected area. If you go ahead and just delete this snippet altogether, you will disable password protection. Additionally, every relevant directory should have a second file right underneath it called .htpassword. Deleting this will also remove password protection, but only for that specific folder. Whichever approach you decide to take, try reaccessing your site once you make the necessary changes. If that doesn't work, the source of your 401 error may lie higher up. Which brings us to number five, contact your hosting provider. If everything on this list fails and the 401 error persists for a while without resolving itself, which again, make sure you check because it may just fix itself, your best bet is to get in touch with your hosting provider. At this stage, you've tried everything, which means there may be a server related issue causing the problem. Your provider support team has access to better diagnostic tools, which means they can help you zero in on the cause of the issue. Hopefully we were able to help you resolve the 401 error on your website. And if not, hopefully your host does. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to give it a like and subscribe for more content. With that said, thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.